So moving on to lipids now, these are the things that we need to talk about. So first of all, lipids, uh, there's a lot to memorize again. So lipids are biological molecules. So you need to remember the four biological molecules, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. Um, most of the stuff in life is, is those one of those groups. Uh, we'll be talking about van der Waals forces and whether they're um, or how they're nonpolar and soluble and, and the various differences between the two. Uh, and so then now lipids are now broken up into triglycerides, phospholipids and steroids. Uh, so triglycerides are first up. Um, and so there's an ester link. Um, I always have trouble, so I'm always going to go over that again. Uh, ketones, esters and ethers. Now ethers is not pronounced, so uh, the T. Uh, this has the T sticking up, so I remember those have the O sticking out of nowhere. Uh, and so the ethers are the the ones with the O in the middle. Um, and the ketones are the basic starters. And then uh, as we learn more, esters are the more complicated ones. Uh, and so that's how I remember that's an ester. Um, otherwise I get those three mixed up all the time. Uh, so we've already talked about condensation and hydrolysis quite a bit from um, the last two, B1 and B2, so go back and look over that. Uh, and so this one is water coming out, uh, so that's condensation. And that's how the glycerol and the fatty acids combine, it's also how they break up. And so there's the ester linkage there, and I just showed you how I remember to call it an ester linkage there. All right, uh, so their structure. I have seen questions that have asked for this information. That's why these things are bold in the past. So that's quite nasty. There's a lot to remember. Uh, 14 to 22 carbons long uh, of an even number. Uh, if there's no double bonds, it's saturated. That means it's hydrogens everywhere. If there's a, a double bond, it's unsaturated. There could be more carbon. So if you look down the bottom, these two are unsaturated. Um, your guide for standard levels says you don't need to know cis trans because that's high level but I find it quite helpful um, to try and picture why are trans so uh, demonized and why are they cause uh, meant to cause so many health effects I just kind of consider that um, and this is sort of jumping the gun saturated fats because they are all saturated they all nice straight lines and they stick together and they have a high melting point and boiling point because they have a nice uh, close surface area here and so they have London dispersion forces sticking them together. Now saturated fats have this kink in them um, so these things actually do go up and down slightly uh, if I had a 3D model out um, but these kinks really do create these massive gaps and I just figured that the enzymes have more accessibility and if you look at cis there's a huge gap here and this is very electronegative so and the trans not so much so so for the same reason um, that's how I understand uh, trans to be particularly bad and saturated to be particularly bad because it's already hard enough for um, the enzymes to access these fats that's why we have bile salts um, to emulsify them into the water to get access um, and being trans or being saturated just makes it that little bit more difficult still for the enzymes to get in there and break them up. Uh, and so that's the chemical basis for my understanding of how I understand why they're good or bad for you. Just basically whether or not enzymes can access them or not. Okay, um, so just some, st so that's um, my take on all of these, um, the chemical structures and health. Just a little bit more detail there, so 109.5, that's tetrahedral. Um, there are certain fatty acids we can't make, so omega-3 and 6. Um, so that refers to 3, uh, the number of carbons from the end where the double bond occurs. And so just to a curiosity, I have got some of those. So that's uh, the carbon on, the third carbon on, there's a, a double bond there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the six. So that's omega-3 and omega-6. And out of curiosity, the plant ones and animal ones, and I guess the fish ones, they do look different. 
so there's also a bit of controversy out there about plant-based proteins and animal-based proteins they're all different they are actually chemically different um, but they are omega-3 because that's what the definition of omega-3 is is the third one from the end this one's going in this direction so that's the that's three carbons along that six carbons along okay so you could be asked um, details like that uh, be unfortunate but you could be asked uh, so moving along so as I just mentioned in the previous slide, saturated versus unsaturated. So if there are lots of these molecules and they're nice and straight like this, there'll be more London dispersion forces between them. And so they will be more likely to be in the solid state. Uh, and unsaturated fats, uh, because they've got that kink, they don't have as much um, surface area and parts where they're sticking and lining up with each other. So they will more likely be liquids. So the ID number tells us exactly how saturated the fat is. So if the uh, fat is very saturated, not much iodine will react. If it's unsaturated, then there'll be lots of double bonds for the iodine to react in this fashion here. So the iodine will come into the double bond and it'll go from brown to being colorless uh, in this reaction here. So we want unsaturated fat so you want the iodine number to be high so if you look there soybean and olive oil are famously uh, touted in the media is good for you and they have very high iodine numbers where um, animal fats are very saturated you can see they've got very low iodine numbers here uh, and so it's important to memorize this formula here so it's important to memorize this definition here the ID number is the number of grams of iodine that react with 100 grams of fat okay so uh, this is a, a, a titration where uh, there's a two-step reaction too, by the way. Um, so thiosulfate reacts with the excess iodine and that's how you do your calculations to work out um, how much, what the iodine number is. So uh, this is an example. Um, so 0.1 moles of lino, lino lake acid reacts with 5.1 grams of iodine. So how many double bonds are present? So first of all, you work out how many moles of iodine has reacted. So if 0.02 moles of iodine uh, has reacted, then, and you've only had 0.1 moles of linoleic acid, that means there was um, two double bonds for every molecule. So for every mole, they needed two moles of iodine. So for every molecule of linoleic acid, uh, there was two molecules of iodine that must mean there's two double bonds uh, so the next question is just an extension of that so what is the iodine a number from that then so the uh, calculate the iodine number of linoleic acid so we need to work out the number of grams of iodine that reacts with a hundred grams of fat that's the definition um, so what we have here uh, we need to work out how many moles is in 100 grams of fat. Uh, so the molecular weight of the uh, linoleic acid, uh, if you look at that chemical, that formula here, we do that there. So there's um, two oxygens here and 32 hydrogens and 18 carbons. So we get 280 grams per mole. Um, the iodine is I2 um, and so that's 254 grams per mole. Uh, linoleic acid has two bonds per molecule that we know from the last problems. Last problem. So basically um, just you just say that you had uh, 280 grams so we've got the ratio there 280 to 254 um, but we're not going to get one is to one, this is a one is to two reaction. So if we have 280 grams, we're gonna have 508 grams of iodine necessary. Uh, so this ratio here, 508 divided by 280, it's going to give you the number of grams of iodine uh, per gram of fat. Uh, and so you, you need 100, so you actually need to times that. There should actually be a times by 100 there. Um, and so the number will be 181, which is um, okay. All right, so moving on. Uh, so fats break down in two different ways. 
um, this is called rancidity um, and this is because uh, this can happen so there can be hydrolysis with water breaking it up um, this can be accelerated by various things such as enzymes temperatures uh, organic acids um, and the other way is oxidative so oxygen here uh, that's a free radical um, and that's now formed a different chemical here uh, and so sunlight can accelerate these oxygen radicals coming in there uh, and breaking down the fats moving on to the properties of fats so properties have uh, fats are very high uh, because carbohydrates and proteins there are many many oxygens hydroxyl groups etc coming off these protein uh, coming off the carbohydrates and proteins are the same uh, and so these fats have just completely reduced carbons covered in hydrogens so there's a lot more um, they're far more reduced there's a lot more oxidation that can occur that's why they produce a lot more energy second to that is they compact quite well together and exclude water so that it's a high density um, because they're hydrophobic insoluble uh, is explaining to you as I talked about in the previous slide is why it takes longer uh, to provide energy because it doesn't solid it's not soluble in water so the enzymes can't get to it um, so that should all make sense from what we've talked about previously okay uh, so the second major group are the phospholipids which is basically what we've been talking about but you get rid of one of carboxylic acids and add a phosphate group which is hydrophilic which is quite significant so if you look at the uh, uses of that that is the cell membrane uh, and so that can be soluble in water and react with the water and then they have this protective inside area that's hydrophobic uh, so that's called amphiphilic um, and we can move on alright so just going on to the health then so the good um, let's just go to the next one so the LDL low density lipoproteins um, so they are considered bad uh, they have lots of saturated fats and trans fats the high density proteins are considered good um, and they are high density um, not because they are unsaturated unsaturated is less dense but because they contain uh, these various proteins and stuff uh, so just high density is is good low density is not good so um, I don't know how much of this slide uh, would be asked on a test it's very much into biology now so atherosclerosis various heart disease problems are uh, all being linked with LDLs um, and high HDLs um, help rather than hurt so I think we can move on to steroids now so uh, cholesterol is the main steroidal backbone and a lot of the other hormones in our bodies uh, are derivatives of the cholesterol so moving back into biology here um, I don't know if there's been an IB question on that before but just to, uh, just to quickly go over it the hypothalamus is sort of the nerve um, interaction with the pituitary uh, and so there's the nervous and the hormonal systems that run the body uh, and this is where they link in together and so the pituitary gland sends out precursor hormones to all the other hormones so um, it's right in the center of the brain and it's right in the center that's where the two main systems of communication interact with the body so that's quite interesting um, so this uh, quickly again just to give you a quick overview these are all of the endocrine glands so this is the hormonal system um, and this here you could pause this if you want if you're a biology student you probably have to know half of those uh, depending on what your personal syllabus is um, so just where the where the enzymes are uh, sorry where the hormones are and what their effect is on the body um, and just so I don't um, just to give you an overview of how it works the cholesterol is the precursor molecule um, to many of the um, hormones and they come off each other so um, 
they're not formed of their own. They go through a process uh, of adding and taking away bits and pieces. Uh, so just want you to be aware that it is a system a little bit like the synthesis in, in um, topic 10. Lastly, I, I throw this in because this is sort of where they come for questions on the test. They basically give you a steroid uh, and ask for what the functional groups are. Um, so you need to review your topic 10 for this. Um, and then they probably could just ask some sort of biology question for one or two marks, which is why you have to read those slides and learn that stuff. Okay, uh, and so lastly, here is a list of the positive and negative uh, things about using steroids. Um, so again, they typically just throw in uh, one or two of these sort of theory questions that are a little sort of biology related. So what are some advantages and disadvantages of using steroids? Um, and so I'll just let you read through those yourself. Um, and that's the end of lipids.